1170U Psychological Foundations and Digital Technology, Module 1, Video Clip 1.3. Problem-Based Learning. In this video, we'll be using this modality of learning for many parts of the course, including two of the assignments. We'll take a look at the general features of problem-based learning that are important for successful adult and online learning environments. We'll also be taking a brief look at constructivism and challenging you to begin to define what problems you would like to investigate for your first assignment, the case study. Here are the guiding questions for this video. Describe what elements are key in problem-based learning. How has problem-based learning been used across disciplines? Do you see a role for PBL in your work environment? And can you think of other learning or work environments where it might be effective? Thinking critically, what are the perceived advantages or disadvantages of PBL environments? Seven Baden refers to characteristics of problem-based learning. Complex, real-world situations that have no one right answer are the organizing focus for learning. Students work in teams to confront the problem, identify learning gaps, and develop viable solutions. And this is what you'll be doing in your PBL assignment later in the course. Students gain new information through self-directed learning, which you'll be doing each week. Staff act as facilitators, and problems will lead to the development of problem-solving abilities. Over a period of several years, problem-based learning has changed quite a bit. There are many different modalities, and there is much diversity in the field. One of the origins of PBL was in the McMaster Medical School, which brought leading-edge PBL to the forefront of learning environments for medical students. Barrows and Tamblin found that although students could learn content and skill, they were not able to apply that knowledge in a new situation. This is also what Schoen refers to as reflection in action. Professionals must learn to apply their knowledge in new and varied situations where the parameters are uncertain and they must combine what they know in new ways. You might see this as the spirit of invention, thinking outside the box of your previous knowledge or just plain creativity. Berdar and Scardamalia also refer to this as the development of expertise, or how experts, well, become experts. The difference between novices at any task and experts is that experts continue to push the edges of their knowledge and can react and problem solve in new and uncertain situations. Novices merely repeat the same patterns that they already know, and this is often not enough to deal with new, complex, and elaborate situations. Let's think of the implications of this. Imagine if the only thing your doctor knew how to do was a specific set of skills. Before we had antibiotics, surgical techniques, and drugs, doctor skills were fairly limited. But learning to take in new information and solve new problems has pushed medical knowledge forward. Here's another example. Canadian astronaut Mark Garneau has said that the key to being successful in space is not only having a solid foundation of technical knowledge, but being able to deal with the uncertainty of situations that he has never encountered, perhaps situations that he's never even imagined. Having an ability to clearly define the problem at hand and working collaboratively with his crew, they are able to find creative solutions. Can you think of some other examples? All knowledge gets pushed forward by defining problems that need to be solved and coming up with creative solutions. Will there be mistakes? Of course! Every high achiever has said that most of their accomplishments rest on a huge pile of errors and mistakes. However, it's important to have the courage to go forward, learn from your mistakes, and try new solutions, new directions, as this is how you will integrate your professional learning. For the purposes of our learning in this course, we'll be using some of these basic principles from Savin Baden. Clarify and agree on the working definitions of terms that are unclear to you. Define the problem and agree what requires explanation. Brainstorm and analyze the problem and arrange some explanations into a tentative solution. Prioritize your learning objectives, take a look at those objectives in self-study, and then report back to your group. What are the values in PBL and approaching your learning this way? Well, there's no more rote assembly line learning and memorization. We become the meaning makers and constructors of our own knowledge. Our perspective is transformed and changed when problems challenge us to see things differently. The problem itself causes an incongruency or disjunction, and that makes you think differently about a situation and find a solution. 
Our perception of facts and reality is reinforced by sociocultural factors, thus being in a culture of problem-based learners encourages us to look for alternative solutions, working both individually and collectively. As Persig states in his classic book, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, stuckness shouldn't be avoided. It is the predecessor of all real understanding. Stuckness isn't the worst of all possible situations, but the best possible situation you could be in. Your mind is empty, you have a hollow, flexible attitude of beginner's mind. Consider for a change that this is a moment to be not feared, but cultivated. If your mind is truly and profoundly stuck, then you may be much better off than when it was loaded with ideas. One of the terms that you'll hear throughout your program is constructivism. Broadly speaking, how we as learners can create and construct our own knowledge. While there are many definitions of constructivism for the purposes of our course, we can say that you, the learner, will have the opportunity to create and construct your own knowledge, bringing in your past experiences, ideas, and beliefs, and using the class environment to test those beliefs. To be successful in this kind of learning environment, the ideal student will be self-motivated and self-directed, as you'll be required to act on the information, interact with colleagues, and share your impressions of the knowledge as you learn. My role as the instructor and facilitator is to create situations and contexts within which you can learn and develop. These might include discussions, debates, arguments, workshops, readings, and tutorial sessions. John Dewey, who is widely seen as the father of modern education, was an advocate for active intellectual learning environments, and he observed that constructivists don't look for copies or mirrors of information in the human mind, but sees humans as observers, participants, and agents who actively generate the new realities that fit them. Let's pause for a minute to think of where we might see PBL in some different disciplines. Here are a few situations where professionals must be prepared to solve real-world, authentic problems that are always changing. Medicine, veterinary medicine, occupational therapy, law, educational administration, architecture, social work, the list goes on. So what do we actually do with this? Well, the PBL process, as identified by Savin Baden, is as follows. First, you'll identify your learning needs asking yourself what are the problems or issues at hand. Next, you need to know where and who you'll go to to so th start to solve the problem. Set your overall goal, identify your group learning needs, and then allocate those to people within your group. You'll have a chance to do the peer teaching portion in the tutorial section of the course, and you'll have some time to synthesize, formulate an action plan for resolving the problem. What might be some of the perceived disadvantages of PBL? Sometimes teachers or students prefer face-to-face -face learning because they perceive that it's going to be more work to do it this way, or teachers or students believe that the curriculum is too complicated and students don't like ambiguity, confusion gets frustrating, and they want to know the right answer. The problem is this. We're living in a digital age where we must be the central consumers and creators of knowledge. It's no longer enough to learn rote memorization of facts. So the first case study assignment will use some of these elements of problem-based learning. Choose an area that interests you and present something you're curious about that relates directly to the topics in the course. For example, you may be interested in the following. The connections between human stress levels and technology the effect of video games on teenagers. How has the increased prevalence of digital media images affected human beings' self-esteem? What's the role of gender in technology? Use your imagination. Begin to use the steps above to identify the problem in your case study that you want to know more about. Where will you find out what you need to know? What questions will you raise in tutorial to get peer feedback? And how will you present this to the class as a video, a text format, an audio file, your end product should be a 5 to 10 minute presentation which you will share in tutorial. You can make a video clip, a photo story, a text-based report. Choose whatever digital mode you think best suits your topic. Synthesis questions for this video. Reflect on the principles of PBL and identify areas of your professional life where they might be useful. Do an inventory of the strengths that you bring to the PBL process. Are you self-motivated, self-directed, a creative thinker? 
Identify a few possible topics for your first assignment and be prepared to get feedback and tutorial on how you might identify, define, or narrow your topic. Thanks for finishing Video Clip 1.3 and I look forward to hearing about your case study ideas.